Hi, welcome to Think Human. I'm Chris, and in this video, I want to talk about a really interesting thought experiment called the China Brain or the Chinese Brain. And this would be to think about and reason about consciousness, what makes something conscious. So, for us as human beings, we know what makes us conscious are the trillions of neurons in our brains, our synapses firing, the patterns that they're arranged at, and how they're firing, and this gives rise to our experience. So, what actually about us is conscious? What is life and death like? Deep down, we're all fundamental particles and atoms same way as this cherries or this floor or anything around me is just made of particles what makes the difference in the same way what makes something conscious there's this idea of panpsychism which would posit that in in some way in some unrecognizable way everything each particle actually is conscious so you could have some inanimate thing like a pen and it would have some form of consciousness, not any thinking thoughts kind of consciousness, but some minimal kind of consciousness. And this would help to explain how it would be possible that neurons in our brains could also arise consciousness. But anyway, the Chinese brain thought experiment would be that if you take the population of China, which is 10 to the power of 9 people, uh, our brains have 10 to the power of 11 brain cells. And if China had, let's say China had 10 to the power of 11 people, uh, many, many, many people. And so there would be one person in China for each of a hypothetical brain. And what if these people in China, each person would have a walkie-talkie that they could communicate with other Chinese people, other brain cells of this gigantic brain, and they would do all of the actions exactly like they would go on in a normal brain. They would simulate that, but they would simulate it in a different kind of scale by people talking with walkie-talkies, communicating, make, making patterns exactly in the same way that they would happen in the brain. So they would send all that data, all that input into some kind of artificial body and they would put all the input from this Chinese brain for entire China, they would put into this body, uh, in, into this system. So the question is, would this hypothetical body uh, be conscious? Would the Chinese brain be conscious? Uh, this is a really interesting question and uh, some philosophers that say that yes, the Chinese brain would be conscious, the body emerging from the Chinese brain, that the Chinese brain is connected to, that body would be conscious, uh, controlled by a conscious uh, organism. Some would say no, it would just kind of uh, simulate it. And it's, it's, it depends a lot on what do you think consciousness really is. My own personal hunch is that the Chinese brain uh, wouldn't be conscious, but it might be something to do with our definitions as well in a similar kind of sense, ants nest, a beehive, they have really com complex communication by themselves, by alone, they can't do anything, just like a neuron can't do anything by themselves. But as a collective, as a super organism, they can do a lot of things. So is a beehive conscious? Is an ants nest conscious? Is a human city conscious? We could ask in the same way. A human city could have way complex, more complex mechanisms uh, than synapses firing to have. So is a, is, a, is a human city actually more complex than a human brain? Uh, you, could, you could think. So some philosophers think that the Chinese brain would be conscious. I'm sort of thinking that not. But I couldn't put it into, into good words why I think that it wouldn't be conscious. It might exhibit some behavior, uh, but I think it would lack experience. And this is a weird kind of thing to think about because it's intuitive. You know, unless you're really, really deeply familiar with the field of consciousness, uh, then there wouldn't be some, you know, really meaningful arguments to kill why some people think that it would be conscious and some think it won't. It's exactly well, kind of the same question. What if we simulated the human brain on a computer? Do you think it's conscious? Okay, well, what if we simulate the human brain, but instead of simulating it in a, in a computer, we simulate it with pen and paper? So we do all of the exact same calculations that a, that a computer would do simulating the brain, only we do them by hand. So would that process be conscious? Would anything there be conscious? We do exactly everything that the computer does to simulate the brain. 
would this be conscious? Would the pen be conscious? Would the paper be conscious? Would would the hand be conscious? As I've said in a previous video, I think that it might have something to do with the speed of processing. So when you really slow it down and pull it apart like that, then you won't have consciousness. Maybe it's something concentrated processing speed of information processing has to be densely compacted and from that kind of consciousness arises somehow. Who knows? So. The Chinese brain is really interesting to think to think about, uh, I think, and we have no valid solution to it. My gut instinct again would say that it wouldn't be conscious, but how would I really know? I don't have anything particularly good to sort of objectify against it. So yeah, I, I think this is just some interesting food for thought. What do you think? So I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any thoughts about this, please share them in the comments. And of course, thank you so much for watching and take care.